And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Honestly, the theme of gangsters makes for a great game, right? The, uh, that's why I designed one with gangsters in it myself. Gangsta, I, I love how it's just gangsta. Uh, gangsta is, really has a mafia theme, but the theme doesn't really matter. This is a trick-taking game with an interesting scoring system. You'll have to see it to uh, understand how it works, so uh, I guess I'll show it to you. At the beginning of the game, you're going to build a grid of cards. Well, you're going to build a grid, A through E here, and 1 through 5. And this is a grid that you're going to place in the table. But the actual game, that's, that's kind of just for scoring. The actual game is going to take place with this deck of cards that you have. This deck of cards is made up of mobsters, the, the four different suits. You have your um, Japanese mob, you have the Italian mob, you have the Russian mob, and then you have the Irish mob, your four stereotypical mobs, I suppose. And each of these mobs has numbers on them from 1 to 8. And then there is a strong mob and a weak mob. And the strong ones are the ones that are in a circle and the weak ones have no circle. And basically a strong mob is higher than a 7. So think of, a, I mean, higher than the one that's weak. So for example, if I have two mobs here, the strong and the weak mob here for the red 8, then the this one here is higher than this one. So think of the ones with a circle as an 8.5. At the beginning of the game, you're going to deal 12 cards out to each player. Those are the 12 cards they'll have over the course of that game. You'll take one of the leftover cards and you'll put that out here and that's going to show what trump is going to be that round. Then the game is played with your typical trick-taking game. One player leads a card and you must play the same card as the first player unless you can show a hand that has no green cards in it, what you're led. Then you can play any card you want. If a trump card is played, the highest trump card to play wins the trick. Otherwise, the highest card of the lead color wins the trick. There is one difference here though. You are allowed to play if, let's say, a trick was led, let's say a, a Yakuza trick was led and this guy plays an 8, I am allowed to play two cards together if I want to, as long as they are both weak or both strong, and both of the same suit, of course. And they also have to be higher than the number that's played. Regardless of what numbers were played, let's say the first trick here, then the player who wins the trick is going to take the cards that they won, and they're going to place them in the grid. They can put these cards wherever they want, but they're going to get points based on how they put the cards out. For every pair, see they made a pair here of sevens. For every pair, they're going to get one point. And we have a card here that shows if you have a pair, you get one point, two pairs gives you three, a triple gives you four, four of a kind gives you six, and five of a kind gives you nine. And you say, well, the grid's going to get filled up pretty quickly. Well, yeah, because you're putting out four cards every turn. So let's say that other trick I showed you, the Yakuza trick was the next one. So that player might put the eight here and get a point for a pair and then put uh, the two threes here. So he has two pairs, so that's three points. And the four and the five, he puts the four here and the five there. So he only gets the three points for scoring those two pair. But at this point in time, we now have a whole row that's filled. Whenever you have a whole row or a whole column that's filled, either and or, at that point, you will turn over the top card of the police deck. The police are going to make a bus. So here I turn over this one. This says everything in row E and column 4 is gone. There are no cards in row E and column 4, there's only one card. So that card is discarded. So now there's room to put more cards. That only took out one card, but depending on what cards you draw, you could take out a whole pile more cards. For example, if I had drawn the C3, those cards would be gone quickly. There's always going to be room for at least four more cards to put out there. You will keep playing tricks, and whoever won the trick leads the next trick, and you'll keep doing that until everyone has played all their cards. It's possible if you play two cards together, 
uh, be, you know, let's say I played these two cards together uh, to win a trick or what have you, then you might not have any cards during the last trick and that's just tough luck. You can't win those tricks, but there's also fewer cards in the final tricks. After you play the final tricks, you count up the points and whoever has the most points is the winner. Gangster, at first blush, is your typical trick-taking game. I very much enjoyed the idea of Gangster, um, but the, the trick-taking, you know, the same play a trick and the Trump wins and so on. It's the scoring that makes this game so fascinating. Because when you're putting the cards out in that grid, you know, that, that's kind of okay. But it's the fact that when you're playing a trick, every card that you play, you're watching whoever wins this trick, what cards are they going to win? And so essentially, what you're doing in this game is you're making cards have variable point totals. You know, there are many games in which fives are worth five points and, you know, a six is worth two points or whatever. You know, different games, different cards are worth point values. Here, they're worth point values depending on what's already on in the grid. So never do I just say, oh, I'm going to throw this card out because I'm not going to be able to use it. It's a seven, you know, and there might be a difference. For example, if I can win a trick with a seven or if I can win a trick with an eight, let's say I have the seven, eight, nine of a color and I'm going to win the trick, picking the right number to win that trick matters. That doesn't mean that the game is complex. I'm very impressed with this. It's a neat trick-taking game that has a lot of legs behind it. So I'm very interested. This is certainly one that I'm going to be keeping in my collection because just because of the uh, what's behind it. So Gangsta, uh, a trick-taking game that I definitely recommend. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.